Hello, guys. I am Shane Davis, 20-year comic veteran. I'm here with Yanti Lin. Today is the day we are talking about some decimated news of DC. Bill Williamham giving back to the public, taking away from DC fables and making a bunch of characters that are public domain that he formatted into a comic idea for Vertigo, a long-running comic, 150-some issues. And now he's saying, uh, because I can't agree that now it goes back to being public domain, this is going to be probably like one of the biggest comic creator versus big corporation news of, I don't know, 10 years from now, like crazy. Let's get into it. So a lot of people have actually slept on fables. I remember talking to my comic store owner years ago, and he was like, well, what kind of books do you recommend to a first-time female reader? And I think he was expecting me to say something like Supergirl or Miss Marvel. I looked at him and I said, Fables. This is a real sleeper hit from Vertigo, which unfortunately was denied a lot of transmedia properties because I believe at the time when Fables was super popular, they also happened to be this show on ABC called Once Upon a Time, which was kind of sort of the same premise, you know, or the fairy tale characters in modern times. Right. So what Willingham did was he took characters like the Big Bad Wolf, Little Boy Blue, Snow White, and put his own spin on them, thereby creating a unique version of these characters that he can legally own. So when people right. say, yeah, he's using public domain characters, but see, he put his spin on them, thereby making them his version, and he owns the rights to them. So legally, no one can make a version of Big B Wolf the way Willingham did. Now, right, right, on to today's story. So Willingham has announced that he's actually giving the rights to fables to the general public. Now, this is a very big news in a way because traditionally, comic books have always been work for hire. That means that you're hired by the company and they oversee with an editor and so on and so forth so they can claim, yeah, we had our input in the creation of this character or this book. So therefore, you are not the sole creator. You cannot claim you have the rights to own it outright. Now, in the case of Willingham, though, he actually created everything of fables, even owns the trademark for fables. And legally, it seems that he has it on the DC lawyers saying, the one thing in our contract, DC lawyers can't contest or reinterpret to their own benefit is that I'm the sole owner of the intellectual property. I can sell it or give it away to whomever I want, which is exactly what he did. Now, what exactly caused this to happen though? So it seems like there are just a lot of cases of issues with creator rights. So DC usually when they have all these agreements, they do things like saying, okay, well, because it's a vertical line, which is considered a creator-owned project, they usually consult with the creator on things like, okay, which artist do you want? What does this cover look good? All these small little nitty-gritty things that maybe you think is not a big deal. But maybe to a creative person, that's literally like the biggest deal ever. After all, they would say, don't judge a book by its cover. But guess what? That's how you sell comics. You judge a book by its cover. So, and the excuse they gave him every single time was, sorry, we overlooked you again. It just fell through the cracks, which is something um, Shane has been getting a lot whenever, you know, he starts asking questions about some of his publication stuff. Yeah, royalties and uh, if you have uh, equity deals, which I have, and and like some Red Lantern characters, um, it, it's a nightmare book accounting. These characters become used in media, and you're like, where's my check? And, y you know, I'm running through the comic division, even though it's a different video game division that's using the characters, and it's just basically one hand trying to get the money but it's also hollywood account accounting um are they trying or doing their part to pay creators what they're owed and and there's a lot of issues with that and look i mean this was a big breakout hit for vertigo vertigo they do create their own stuff to a, a degree and and i really want to point that out to people a lot of people with vertigo projects are waiting for the rights to revert back meaning the company has to quit publishing them or something for their book to come back and then they can print it themselves. So now every Vertigo deal is kind of different. There's not one Vertigo deal. There's like three or four and they can be tailored to each creator. I have no idea what William Helms deal is. And, um, uh, and a lot of hands have changed and that's kind of going to be brought up here. Whatever deal he had done for, for Fables, new management may not agree with it. New management may not care about the old deal. Like they don't do business that way, even though that was forged however long ago. So we'll see that DC actually is doing some of their, you know, little games with Bill Willingham over here. When Mark Doll and Dan Didio first approached me with the idea of bringing Fables back for its 20th anniversary, during the contract and negotiations for new issues, their legal negotiators tried to make it a condition of the deal that the work be done as work for hire. 
effectively throwing the property irrevocably into the hands of DC. When that didn't work, the excuse was, sorry, we didn't read your contract going into this negotiation. We thought we owned it. So I'm pretty sure though, see, when you have this team of lawyers working in your office all the time, I'm pretty sure they know exactly what Willingham's rights are. I do not think they unknowingly tried to get the rights from him. We can see though that there's a history of this. It looks like DC officers admitted that their interpretation of our publishing agreements and the following media rights agreement is that they could do whatever they wanted with the property. They could change stories or characters in any way they wanted. They had no obligation whatsoever to protect the integrity and the value of the IP, either from themselves or from third parties, including like Telltale Games. So we know that there's this real nightmare right now between Willingham and DC over the payment of Telltale Games. We know that there was this whole story about Big B Wolf that was turned into a video game. And for some reason, Willingham was not paid any money for it, even though he literally created the character of himself on that. And obviously, Fable belongs to him. And in the end, they've paid him some money, framing it as consultation fees. So that's the way of saying, yeah, we did something wrong, but we're not admitting we did something wrong. Here's some money now. Shut up and go away. Right. You have to understand, like, you're a big corporation. You buy DC Comics. Uh, you have a library. You look at, you're making video games and stuff like that. That Most owners are going to assume they have the rights to everything DC is publishing. That like They don't understand why would we be making content that other people own. That comic companies generate content that we own. That's why we're buying a comic book company. And again, like new management changes. Maybe if that game had came out during a different time when Paul Levitz was there or something, he would have probably been treated better. You know, um, it, this is the thing. So much so, a lot of creators are kind of worried about, like, you know, with the new uh, Discovery Warner Brothers, how will be handled uh, if our characters do see the silver screen? This is how we end up here today with this press release from Bill Willingham, where he basically said, you know what, I gave him all these years to try and resolve all these matters to my satisfaction, and they didn't. So I'm going to do something that would be both legal and ethical. So I assume because he owns the rights to Fables, he's the creator of it, he basically said, yeah, you guys, everybody have fun in my pool. You want to do a story about Big B Wolf? Go ahead. You want to do a story about Boy Blue? Go ahead. Now, Willingham himself, though, he's still contracted to DC with the Fable stuff. So that means that he can't publish Fable comics except through DC. He can authorize a Fable comics except through DC or lunchboxes or all these other deals. But he gave the right to do that to other people. So what does that mean? You have the rights to make your Fable movies and cartoons and publish your Fable books and manufacture your Fable toys and do anything you want with your property because it's your property. Now, we know in legal terms, he's basically saying, no tixie backsies, I'm giving it to you guys. It's yours, have fun. And I wonder now, though, what is happening up in the DC legal office over this? Uh, probably nothing too good. They have a sequel to the game, right? Coming out in development, Ooh, right? That's right, yeah. So now, the They definitely still owe Willingham money on that, don't they? Um, sure, but obviously they didn't pay him for the first game, so I doubt he's going to get money for the second game. And and obviously this is like a creator rights nuclear thing happening here. He's hitting a red button and pounding it here. Um, and maybe just to kind of spite DC. But then what's he got to lose? Uh, if they're holding up publication of some books, not going forward. If uh, there's money owed that he's never getting like, I mean, what does it matter? Maybe this is just, you know, hit them where it hurts. The reality is if um, anybody can make fables, does fables have any value to DC Comics? If anybody can do it. And that, that you have to understand that's a thing. You know, DC Comics has value for Superman today. But when everybody is able to make a Superman product, I don't know if Superman's going to be important to DC Comics anymore. But some of these properties are going to be coming up on public domain and stuff like that. So interesting times in the American comic book field. If you guys will, please hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Also check out Extend. We do have 27 days left on this. We did add some uh, some cool covers, a Mark Texera glow in the dark cover and a new Jonathan Malin cover. You guys can check out this campaign. We crossed $82,000. This is a creator owned endeavor. Um, NineLivesComics.com, Indiegogo, either way, back us. The link is down below, and I can't wait to see you on board for this smash hit comic book coming at you from Nine Lives Comics. Take care. I dream. I dream of a world carefully crafted, beautifully flawed, 
This is Accent. In this game of life, there is one thing that determines a victor. A player's ability to grow. A player's ability to evolve. A player's ability to survive. Every player in their place. Learn. Learn to work together. Learn. Learn to destroy one another. My name is Dog. Choose to play. Choose to upgrade. Choose to level up. Choose to accept.